so yesterday I talked about um, some of the um, struggles that I had bef um, when I was younger, just taking ownership and um, and asserting like the, the way that I thought or things that I knew um, because I would assume that clearly I couldn't know what um, what was going on. I must be missing something if if I found the answer and other people didn't. So, um, and, and I don't know whether all of that is ADHD. Some of it might be, some of it uh, might be uh, being a female in a male dominated field for so long or just part of my personality or other things that I picked up, um, you know, growing up about, you know, speaking up or, you know, taking risks or whatever. I don't know. It, and it doesn't ultimately matter. Um, but because what really matters is that um, I'm not the only one who does this. Uh, it seems more common in women. I don't know. Um, but most of the people that I talk to about this stuff are women. So it could be just that my sample size is, um, is biased. But, um, but it certainly seems that it's, uh, it ha that there's more um, of a female trait where we, um, where we don't really recognize um, all of the skills that we have. Uh, and so I want to just share with you a couple of places to think about your, or a couple of ways to think about your skills or ways to think about what you've done um, in order to, to build that list of assets, especially if you're looking to change careers or, um, or, or go out on your own and do something a little bit different. You might not think about all of the things you've done and how they apply, because if you've done only um, a particular field, you might just feel like that's all you know, but that's not all you know. So um, first is, um, the first thing is look at all of your experience. Don't just look at work. And I know, um, you know, people talk about this and, and I don't mean just that, not just because being a mom is hard, but not just, you know, oh, I, I juggle a house, which is, it, which is in itself its own thing. But I mean, like, volunteer work or part-time work or um, any kind of stuff that you've done where you've learned a skill and you've applied it and gotten the results that you needed. So um, I was just talking with someone the other day who was looking for a job and um, I was looking at her resume and noticed that she had a couple of part-time things down. And I was like, well, I mean, why don't you just put those all, those are all basically your clients. And now you have a you know, you you put yourself under this umbrella of, you know, I am a, you know, I am a consultant or I do this thing. And so that way, then it shows a, a continuity of these little bits and um, it doesn't look all choppy on a resume and, and it's all work, whether you're working part-time or not, you're, you're working. I mean, if you're working three part-time jobs or one full-time job, I mean, the three part-time jobs, it's a lot more juggling and a lot more maintenance and uh, honestly, a lot more challenging um, than if you only have to go to one place and um, and probably have benefits if, you know, if it's a regular full time job versus, a um, you know, a bunch of part time jobs. So. So there's there's those ways to think about things. So don't only um, when you when you think about your experiences, you know, um, think beyond what you what you get paid to do and what you get paid to do full time, because full time is I mean, that's. I mean, that's just some arbitrary number. Um, and then the other thing is um, is to, I, and this is a tip I learned from um, from copywriting. When I started doing writing, like one of the things you learn is you, you want to get down to like the ultimate um, benefit to a person. Like why does someone ultimately care? And so like you're supposed to keep, you know, asking the question, but why? But why? Until you can get down to like the, well, because that means they, you know, are happy, you know, like the, the core of the issue. And so like right now, or like if right now your job is, um, I don't know, um, I'll use an example from someone I'm talking to, is a customer success manager. And, um, and so you're working with big clients to keep them happy, but you happen to be working in a very niche field. Well, you don't do that job for that field. You do that job for companies looking to maintain their customers. Um, 
And so you, you can think of it broader and then you can, you know, a little bit broader and then you think, okay, well, why is that important? And why is that important? And why is that important? And you get to like the ultimate benefit of what your skill set does for another company. And it's, it often will be less granular and specific than you think. You can make it broader and then you can apply it to a bunch of other places. And granted, it takes a little bit of, um, of you know confidence and ability to share that when you go on job interviews and someone asks about um well why you know but this looks so different and you can just be like well no but i can see why it looks different um you know and i thought it was quite different too but the more i thought about it and then you just explain it and um and ultimately whatever you're doing you're going to solve a problem and so you just need to figure out what it is the problem that you solve and and think about it in a bigger way than what you might very specifically do. So, um, so that was just one example. Um, if you have any other thoughts, you can put them in the comments because clearly off the top of my head, I'm not coming up with them, but um, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk about more of these things, like how to think about your skills in a way that, um, that opens up possibilities for you instead of feeling like you're constrained in a box. Um, that you may not even want to be in. So, um, so yeah, there's all kinds of different ways to to take that that very specific thing and generalize it and apply it to so many different um, possibilities. That um, and then when you do that with all of the things that you are capable of doing, and even if you feel like you're not capable of doing things, you are capable of doing things. And Again, I think I, I touched on this in another thing, like think about what you like to do and why, why do I like to do that? Why do I like to do that? And just keep asking yourself why to get down to that nugget of what it is about something that is appealing and makes you feel good. And then see if you can expand on that. Um, again, I'm happy to um, <laughs> to chat about any particular example. I just need some examples because um, they're not popping into my brain right now. But um, but yeah, so I think that is something that we all struggle to do. Sometimes, again, I think I've mentioned this before, it's a good idea to talk about things with um, with the friends because sometimes we get a little bit um, bound into things and um, and we don't really see beyond that. Or the other question thing is if you talk to if you're talking to a friend, especially someone who doesn't work specifically with you, um, and you can kind of talk about some of the things, then they might ask questions like, you know. Or, you know, pretend you're explaining this to to someone who doesn't really know what you do and be like, OK, well, I do X and that means that this, this and this happen. And it's important because this, this and this happen. And you kind of see, you know, if someone's asking you questions or doesn't know what you do and you have to explain it in the process of explaining it, you may make some insights or discoveries about what skills that you have that you're not even thinking about that you have because you just you just do your thing. And um, and we kind of forget that um, that things take skills to do. And um, and sometimes we just, you know, because once it becomes normal, you kind of forget that you never knew it. It's the, like the curse of knowing or the, there's, there's some some term about it. Like once you know how to do something, you can't really remember not knowing it. And so where you can't go back to not knowing it. So then it seems like you can't. Yeah, it's very it's very like head spinny. But um. But at any rate, uh, I would love to share some examples if you want to put them in the comments, as I said, um, or you can just reach out to me um, through my website and uh, and shoot me a message through there. And uh, yeah, so that's just where it's just a couple of ideas for if you're trying to figure out like what are some skills that you have that um, or some ways to frame the skills that you have so that you can do more and open up more opportunities for yourself. If you uh, have any comments, leave them below or like or share and subscribe. Thanks.